All right, uh, welcome to this lesson on uh, 2-6. We're going to be talking about exclusively about the quadratic formula and how to use and how to determine the nature of solutions. So we're going to be deriving the quadratic formula and using it to solve quadratic equations. So <clears throat> the essential question, how do we uh, use this quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations and to predict the nature of their solutions? So our learning goal is to be able to solve quadratic equations using this quadratic formula. And then this is based off of the standard, which is we need to be able to solve quadratic equations multiple ways, such as inspection, taking the square roots, completing the square, quadratic formula, and factoring. But we're going to be focusing exclusively on the quadratic formula today. So in order to understand the lesson, we're going to be describing, uh, talking about the discriminant as well as the quadratic formula. All right, so we're going to be de deriving the quadratic formula to uh, in this lesson. So we're going to first derive it and then you know figure out where it comes from, and then we're going to actually use it. So in order to derive the quadratic formula, we need to actually do um, what we did in the last lesson. So we need to actually complete the square here. So uh, the entire process of completing the square that we learned last lesson, we're going to apply to this lesson. So here's how we do it. So first we start out with the quadratic um, equation in standard form. So remember that the quadratic equation in standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. And then what we want to do is we want to set it equal to 0 so we can solve. So it turns out you can only use the formula when this side is equal to 0. So this side needs to be 0. Okay, so how do we come up with this formula? Well, using um, the completing the square process means that you have to solve for x by turning this into a perfect square trinomial. So in order to do that, you're gonna first move the constant over to the other side. So we're gonna move that c over to the other side by subtracting it out. Okay, um, now uh, we get negative c on the right side. So the next step, if you recall from lesson 2-5, we need to pull out that constant that's in front of the x, uh, the coefficient for the x squared. So we need to factor that out. So we're going to pull that out. And when we do so, a divided by a is 1. So we're left with 1x squared. And I'm not going to write the 1 because it's invisible. And then how many times does a go into b? Well, in order to do that, we need to divide the two numbers, right? So we need to take b and divide it by a. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to write this out as b over a. And that just means b divided by a. And then we got an x. All right, I'm going to leave myself some room here so that we can actually complete the square. So now I got a negative c on the right side. OK, so, so far so good. We have the b over a. Now we're going to do the complete the square. So in order to do that, I'm going to figure out what goes into this box so that this becomes a perfect square trinomial. To do that, I take the middle term and I divide it by 2 and then square it. So this is known as completing the square. So we're going to do that now. So complete the square. <clears throat> OK, so we're going to take that middle term, which is b over a the middle coefficient. We're going to divide it by 2 and then we're going to square it. Okay, so we're going to take b over a and we got to divide it by 2. So how do we do that? Well, we're first going to write it as a division problem. So we got b over a divided by 2 and 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. And then of course I got the square it out there, but we'll deal with that later. First we're focused on the division problem. So how do I divide these two fractions? Well, turns out you want to you wanna do uh, the old keep, change, flip. So you're going to keep the first fraction, b over a. You're going to change the division symbol into multiplication. And then you're going to flip the second fraction. So this is the keep part. Uh, this is the change. And then this is the flip part. So we're going to flip that, and that becomes 1 over 2. And then, of course, we're squaring it at the very end. And then you can multiply the two fractions together. So we got b times 1 is b, and then a times 2 is 2a. 
So we got b over 2a squared. <clears throat> all right, <clears throat> and then you're going to distribute the squared to all of, all of the terms on the inside, the parentheses. So you have b squared over, well, we know 2 squared is 4. So we're going to say that that's 4. And then a squared is just a squared. OK, so this guy is the guy that goes in the box over here. So we got b squared over 4a squared. OK, so now we're going to actually fit that term. We're going to put that term over here. So now we got to balance this out, right? So I added a b squared over 4a squared, and I added it out of nowhere, which means I got to balance it out. I got to put it on the right side. So whatever I do on the one side, I need to do on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this c over, and I'm going to give myself some more room here so I can include another term. All right, so what do I need to do? Well, I need to include my b squared over 4a squared. But also keep in mind that I'm multiplying this a over on this side because I'm distributing that a to everything, right? So that means I need to distribute it to this term that I just added. So every time you add a term on the inside of the parentheses, just make sure that you include whatever is distributed against it uh, on that other side. Okay, so the a in this case. All right, now this is completely balanced. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to kind of simplify this a little bit. We're going to factor this guy. Now he is officially a perfect square. So we're going to bring this down first. So we got a. And now this can be expressed as something squared. How do I do that? Well, we know that the variable is x. So we can write this out as x. And then we need to figure out what goes inside this box, right? To figure out what goes inside that box, you're going to take the middle coefficient, b over a, and this is this is the shortcut. So let's write this out. This is a shortcut. The shortcut is to take the middle term and then divide it by 2. But we already did this earlier, right? We did this, you know, over here, right? So we want to be able to redo that again, you know, just use the same work that we did earlier. And we got b over 2a. So now that goes in here. And we know it's positive, right? So I'm going to write this as positive b over 2a. OK, so that's how you go. That's how you factor uh, whenever you complete the square. And then you want to go to the factored form. <clears throat> now we're going to bring down the equal sign and then bring down the negative c. And then this is from the, uh, oops, I'm sorry. We want to bring down the equal sign, and then we want to bring down whatever we put in here, right? So we want to bring that down. So I need to give myself some more room here. So I'm going to put this there. And I'm going to move this over a little bit over here. OK. So we got our a times b squared over 4a squared, and then minus c. OK, so we're going to have to multiply this eventually. So we can do this now. So what? So this, this can be written as a over 1, right? So notice that this becomes a times b squared over 4a squared, right? So let's write that out right now. Let's focus on this part. Okay, let's write that over on this on the side here. So a times b squared is a b squared. And then 1 times 4a squared is 4a squared. So now we got one of these a's cancels out, right? So this a, one of them cancels out with this a. So whenever you have something on top and the bottom, they cancel each other out. So that means we only have one a left over. So this becomes b squared over 4a to the 1 power, since one of them canceled. All right, so this is going to be our new guy. So we're going to replace that there. 
Okay, and I'm going to replace that back in purple. So now we have a x plus b over 2a squared equals we got b squared over 4a minus c. All right, so bear with me here. There's a lot, there's a few more steps to do. So remember, the purpose of this is to solve for x, right? So we got to get rid of everything else that's not x. So we, let's get rid of this a first. Now this a is multiplying. So the only way I can get rid of the a here is by dividing by a. So I'm going to divide everything by a. Okay, so now the a cancels and I'm left with x plus b over 2a squared equals <clears throat> b squared over 4a minus, I'm going to write this c as c over 1 so that I can deal with it later. And then over a okay so now before we do anything um, else, we want to be able to simplify this, you know, crazy fraction, right? Uh, I don't want to do anything else until we simplify that part, make it look better. So we know that the common denominator, we got a denominator of 4a and a denominator of 1 here. So we need a common denominator for those two. The common denominator between 4a and 1 is 4a. So I'm going to multiply, I'm going to, I'm going to multiply this by 4a. But if I give it a 4a, I need to give this a 4a. Okay. Uh, so now we have, uh, so I'm like, again, I'm just focusing on this part right now. I'm not doing anything else. Okay. So now we have b squared minus 4ac over 4a, and then this is over 4a. So 1 times 4a is 4a, c times 4a is 4ac. Now, and then I have this all over a, right? Okay, so now this part right here, this this fraction, I can combine it now under a common denominator, right? So I'm going to, I'm just going to write, I'm just going to subtract the numerators and then divide it by 4a. So I'm going to subtract the numerators and then put it all under one denominator, 4a. There you go. So that fraction on the top is done. Now, how do we divide two fractions again? Well, we did this earlier, right? So you write this out as a division problem. So we got the B, this first fraction right here on the top, right? That's one fraction. And then we got this other fraction, which is, remember, the, the fraction bar means division. So we're dividing. And then A is the same thing as A over 1. So we've done this before. We keep the first fraction, you change, and then you flip. So you keep the first fraction, you change, change that to multiplication, and then you flip. So that's 1 over A. And then you multiply straight across. So let's so 4a times a is 4a squared. So we got b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. All right, that was a lot of work there, but we finally got it simplified. So now this part here is going to replace all of this. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the equation using that, and I'm going to write that in blue. So we got here x plus b over 2a squared equals, in blue, b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. All right, so now we got a couple more steps and we're pretty much done. So remember, we're solving for x here. So we got to get rid of the squared. The only way to get rid of a squared is with a square root. You guessed it. So take the square root of both sides. However, if you take the square root of both sides, remember to include the plus or minus. All right, the plus or minus means that you have two solutions because it could be positive or negative. All right, now the square and the square root cancel. 
and we have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus square root. And let's go ahead and split this right away. So let's split this into square root of b squared minus 4ac. And then let's also split this into square root of 4a squared. So we could split that into two different square roots on top and bottom. That's a cool little property. So now we know the square root of 4 is 2, and then the square root of a squared is a. So this becomes 2a. So we're going to change this, and that becomes 2a. So we got x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And then the last step here, subtract by b over 2a on both sides. And we will get our quadratic formula. So we got x is equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, because they have the same denominator, we can combine them under one denominator. And we get our lovely quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is referred to as the quadratic formula. All right, so you can imagine that we don't want to do this a million times, right? It's a lot of steps involved. So therefore, if we know the formula, we can use it for any scenario, which is, which is a useful tool. So this is the formula we're going to be using in this lesson. We don't have to derive the formula again. We just have to use the formula. All right, so instead of having to complete the square all the time, we can use this formula and be done with it. So now that we got the formula, the quadratic formula, let's talk about the discriminant. Now the discriminant is the term inside the square root, okay? So this part right here is the discriminant, okay? So the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac. <clears throat> so um, the term inside the square root uh, in, in the quadratic formula. Okay, uh, something that is inside the square root is called the radicand. So whatever is inside a square root is the radicand. So like the square root of six, for instance, in that case, six is like the radicand. Okay, and then this is this is the radical symbol. Okay, so that way you know like what I mean by radicand, radical. So why is it called the discriminant anyways? It kind of sounds like discriminate, right? Like discrimination. Uh, the reason why is the discriminant actually does that. It actually discriminates between three different types of solutions. Okay, and that's why it's called the discriminant. How does it do that? Well, there are three cases for the discriminant, okay? So cases, three cases of solutions. All right, the first case is when the discriminant is greater than zero, okay? So if the discriminant here is bigger than zero, if the discriminant is bigger than zero, right? That means you could take the square root of a number. So let's just say that this was equal to say four, right? And then we could take the square root of four. Well, if we take the square root of four, that's gonna give us two, right? And we, we're gonna be doing plus or minus two. So that means we're gonna be having two solutions here. The plus or minus means that you have two solutions, as long as you have a number on the other side, right? So if it's greater than zero, that means we're going to have a square root. And if we have a square root, that means we have two solutions. Okay, so uh, two real solutions. So this means we have two 
to real solutions. All right. Now, the second case is when it's equal to zero. Now, if it's equal to zero, then that means like, for example, let's just say it was equal to zero, right? And let's say we got x is equal to negative three plus or minus square root of zero. And that term is zero over, um, I don't know, three. Well, in that case, if that's zero, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't really change the amount of solutions. It's, I mean, it's, it's not gonna be two solutions anymore because if that's zero, it doesn't matter if you're plusing or minusing it, you're still gonna have negative three over three, right? And you're only gonna get negative one. So it doesn't matter whether you add it or subtract it if you got zero on the other side. So if you got the discriminant equal to zero, you only have one solution. So we have one real solution. Now what happens if it's negative? less than zero well if it's less than zero right so for example if you had negative three plus or minus square root of uh, negative four over uh, three well in that case this is negative right so you can't take the square root of a negative number uh, unless you are talking about imaginary numbers here right so in this case we're gonna have two imaginary solutions or zero real solutions in that case. So if you have a negative inside the radical, we have no real solutions. In that case, we only have two imaginary or complex solutions. We have two complex solutions. Okay, so this is this is why it's called a discriminant. It discriminates between those three cases. So that way, like depending on what number you are, that'll that'll tell you what category you belong to. All right, so that is all about the discriminant. And we're gonna be using this to describe the nature of the solutions. Without even having to solve the equation, we can determine how many solutions it has. So uh, let's look at part A. So it wants you here to describe the nature of the roots for each equation. So I just want you to talk about how many solutions you have. Are they imaginary? Are they real? Do you even have any solutions? So let's look at um, A. So in this case, we know that, you know, this is A, that's A, that's B, and that's C, right? And we also know that there are two solutions here. If we look at the graph, the graph crosses the x-axis twice, which means we have two solutions. We also call them roots, right? So we have two roots. So we know it crosses twice, so we know we're gonna have two solutions. How do we determine that from the discriminant? Well, we plug it in. So we got a, b, and c. So a equals two, b equals negative seven and c equals three so we're going to plug it in so the discriminant we'll call it d for discriminant is b squared minus four ac so we're going to plug that in so we got negative seven squared minus four a is two <clears throat> c is three so we got times three now negative seven squared is negative seven times negative seven which is 49. Four times two is eight. Eight times three is 24. So we got here 25 for the discriminant. Now, since the discriminant is bigger than zero, this means we have two real solutions or two real roots, which we do have in this case. We have two real solutions because it crosses the x-axis twice. Now, if it didn't cross the x-axis at all, we have no real solutions. Now, let's look at part B. Now, part B, uh, if you look at the graph, it crosses the x-axis 
once. So this means you have one real solution. We'll say that you have one real root. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, the discriminant. So this is A, B, and C. So A is 4, B is 12, uh, C was 9. So now let's plug it in into the discriminant. We got B squared minus 4AC equals, so B is 12, 12 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 4, times C, which is 9. 12 squared is 144. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 9 is 144. And so you're going to get 0 for the discriminant. And remember that if you get 0, you have one real solution. All right. Now look at the last case. So again, if you look at the graph here, it doesn't cross the x-axis at all, right? So it doesn't cross at all. So doesn't cross the x-axis. So that means there are no real solutions. It doesn't say that there is any solutions at all. It's just saying there are, there are no real solutions, which means it has to be imaginary. So in this case, if you look at A, that's A, B, C. So A is 1, B is 2, and C is 8. So let's plug it in. So we get B squared minus 4AC equals, so 2 squared minus 4 times A is 1 times C is 8. So 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 8 is 32. So we have 4 minus 32 is negative 28, which is indeed less than 0, which is falls under the third case, which means we have no real solutions, which means that we have 2 so we'll write this out. We have two complex or imaginary. So we have two complex solutions. Okay, so we haven't solved it yet. We've, we've just been determining how many solutions it has and whether they're real or not. So let's actually go ahead and solve it. Before we do that though, go ahead and give the following problem a try, pause the video, and then we'll talk about it in just a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about the nature of the roots for each function. So looking at the first one, we know A is 16, B is 8, and C is 1. So let's plug it in to the discriminant. So B is 8, so 8 squared minus 4. A is 16, and C is 1. All right, so 8, eight times 8 is 64. 4 times 16 is 64, actually. So we actually get 0 out of this which means we have one real solution. All right, done. So I got the next one. So we got A is two, B is negative five, C is six. So again, plugging it into the discriminant, we got negative five squared minus four times A times C. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. So this is going to give us a negative number. 
So we get negative 23, which is less than zero, which means we have two, we have no real solutions or two complex solutions. So we will say no real solution to complex uh, solutions. Okay, that's all there is to it. All right, so now let's actually talk about how we find, how we actually solve a quadratic function using the quadratic formula. So these, this is known as finding the zeros or the roots or the x-intercepts. So how do we find the zeros? Well, we're, to find the zeros, you set y to zero, right, first off. So we set y to zero. Uh, so y is going to equal to zero. So we got 3x squared minus 4x minus 9, and we got zero on one side. In order to use a quadratic formula, you have to have zero on one side. If you don't, then you got to force it to be zero. All right, so now we got a is 3, b is negative 4, c is negative 9. So let's plug it into the formula. So with the quadratic formula, I'm just going to shorten it to QF. That is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so, uh, so remember that b is equal to negative 4. So if I so in the formula I got a negative, but we know that b is negative four. So make sure to write it out as a double negative there. We got plus or minus square root b is negative four squared minus four. A is three, so replace that with three. And c is negative nine, so replace that with negative nine. All over two times a, which is three <clears throat> all right the rest is just um, some you know arithmetic uh, being able to like you know add together negative numbers all that stuff squaring all that so we got two negatives which make a positive so negative four squared negative four times negative four is 16 now we got negative four times three is negative 12 so this part right here is going to give us negative 12. And then negative 12 times negative 9, that's going to give us a positive number, right? Two negatives make a positive when we multiply. So this is going to give us a positive number. So I'm going to change this to a positive. And 12 times 9 is 108. And then 2 times 3 is 6. <clears throat> so we got 4 plus or minus square root. 16 plus 108 is 124. <clears throat> all right, so we got 124 and all over six. All right, so now we got square root of 124, and we know that this is not a perfect square root, so we're gonna have to break it apart. Now we did this, you know, um, in class when we were, whenever we were breaking apart the square roots, right? So let's go ahead and uh, focus on doing this guy. So if we wanted to do the square root of 124, all right. So in that case, um, let's take let's cut this in half. So we know that. Uh, like 2 goes into 124 62 times if we cut that in half so this is prime 62 2 goes into 62 31 times all right there you go I don't think it can cut into any more so this is actually uh, a prime number as well so now remember that square roots you're looking for pairs right so I got a pair of twos I can pull out of the square root so now we got a 2 on the outside and on the inside, we got a 31. So we got a 31 left over on the inside. All right, so we got four, oops. Four plus or minus 
Now we pulled out the two, remember we pulled out the two, so that pulls out as a pair. And then square root, and then what's left over on the inside is 31. All over six. All right, we are almost done with all the solutions. So now, notice that two goes into four and two, right? So we can pull out a two from here. So let's factor out a two. So if I factor out a two, two goes into four twice. So we got two times two. <clears throat> and then we got plus or minus, two goes into two once, so we got one and then with a square root of 31. So and there's an invisible one there, but I'm not gonna write it. So I'm just gonna erase it. And then we got square root of 31 left over, and then all over six. Okay, so this is a fraction right here. So notice that that's a fraction. We can reduce that fraction by dividing by two on the top and bottom. And in that case, two divided by two is one. So this becomes one so we got two, an invisible one here, two plus or minus square root of 31 over, and then six divided by two is three. Now we don't like to write that invisible one, so I'm just gonna release the one, I'm not gonna write it anymore, and I got two plus or minus square root of 31 over three, and this is equal to x. So we got two solutions here. Now, quadratic formula is easy to plug in, but there's a lot to do as far as the math, like as far as once you plug it in, there's a lot of steps afterwards. However, the good thing about the quadratic formula is that you can use it no matter what solution, no matter what quadratic you're looking at. As long as it's quadratic, you can use the quadratic formula. And sometimes you won't be able to factor, so that's where the quadratic formula really shines. Okay, so now let's look at part B. Okay, so now we got A is one, so A is an invisible one. B is negative nine, and C is 27. So let's plug it in. So we got X equals um, negative B. So I'm just using this formula again, I'm not gonna write it again. So we got negative B, and B is negative nine, plus or minus square root, B squared, which is negative nine, and we're gonna square it minus 4ac, a is 1, and c is 27, all over 2a, and a is 1. All right, so now we're going to simplify. Remember, two negatives make a positive. So we got positive 9 plus or minus square root. All right, so negative nine squared is negative nine times negative nine, which is 81. And then we got four times one is four, and then four times 27, what is that? Well, let's do that off to the side. So we got seven times four is 28, two times four is eight, plus two is 108. So we get 108. So looks like we're gonna get a negative number on the inside. 2 times 1 is 2. So we got 9 plus or minus square root and 81 minus 108. That's going to be negative 27. <clears throat> all right, so all over 2. All right, so I know, so we, we if we have a negative number, we know that there are no real solutions. We cannot take the square root of a negative number. However, we can turn it into an imaginary number, right? So if we have a square root of a negative number, we can automatically change it into an i. So we can change this into nine plus or minus uh, square root of 27, and then i, and the i is on the outside, okay? And then all over two. Now, we're almost done. We have to break down the 27 because 27 breaks into um, some nice numbers here. So let's break this guy down. So we got 27 breaks into three and nine. Three is prime, and then nine breaks into three and three. So we got a pair of a pair of threes that we can pull out. <clears throat> so I, I'm going to box the pair of threes. That goes outside the radical, and I'm left with a three on the inside. Okay, so we got nine 
plus or minus. We got this three that I put in red on the outside. And then the three that I put in blue that is left over on the inside times I all over two. And then we're just gonna stick an X in front of this in the beginning and then call it a day. So we got two solutions here, uh, nine plus or minus three times square root of three I all over two. And that's our guy. All right, so this one we clearly have no real solutions but we have two complex solutions with imaginaries, right? <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and give this problem a try and we'll discuss it in just a little bit. All right, so let's look at the first problem. So what are the zeros of each function? So here we got a is one, b is two, c is eight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it right in. We got x equals um, negative, now negative b, and b is two, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is two squared, minus four a is one, c is eight, so four ac, all over two times a, which is one. All right, so we got a negative two. We can just get rid of the parentheses. We don't really need the parentheses there for the two there, plus or minus square root. So two squared is two times two, which is four. Four times one is four. Four times eight is 32. So we got minus 32 all over two. So we got negative two plus or minus four minus 32 is negative. So we got a negative number there. So now we know that that negative becomes an I, right? So we're gonna put an I just after it because we can't take the square root of a negative number. Uh, so we gotta turn it into imaginary. And then we gotta break down the 28. So 28 breaks into two and 14, which breaks into two and seven. So we got a pair of twos, so we can pull out. And we got a seven left over on the inside. So we have negative two plus or minus. We got the two that we pulled out on the outside. <clears throat> and we got the seven that we left on the inside. We got the I in front of it, and, and then we got a two on the bottom. All right, so now these, so we can pull out a two from here and here. We can, those have a two in common. So we can pull out a two. So if I factor out a two, two goes into negative two. So we got two goes into negative two, negative one times. And then two goes into two, one time, right? So we got plus or minus and then an invisible one there times square root of seven i all over two. Now this is a fraction, right? So we can divide the top and bottom by two. So we got two divided by two and then two divided by two. So it basically becomes one over one. So they basically cancel each other out if you think about it. So you're left with negative one plus or minus, and I'm not gonna write that one anymore. That one is invisible, i. And that's my final answer. That's what X is. Two answers. All right. Now let's look at this one. So we got A is 3, B is negative 2, and C is 7. So X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2 a. So two negatives is a positive. So positive two plus or minus square root. Two squared is four. Four times three is 12. 12 times seven is 84. Again, unfortunately, it is actually another negative. So that means we have another i here. 
So we got two plus or minus square root of negative 80 over six. So it looks like we got another set of complex solutions. So we're gonna stick an I in front or yeah, in the very beginning after afterwards. And then we're gonna break down the 80. So 80 breaks into two and 40, two and 20, two and 10, and then two and five. So we got, looks like we got a pair of twos here and then another pair of twos there. Be careful with this part. So we can pull this pair of two out, we can pull that pair of two out. So we got a two there and a two there. And then we multiply them, two times two is four. So I'm gonna write those both twos out. And then this, we got a five left over on the inside. So we got a two plus or minus. Now we got two twos that we pulled out, this two times this two. And then we got a square root and then whatever's left over on the inside, which is the five. And then of course we got the I on the outside over six. So now we got two times two is four. So we got two plus or minus four square root of five I over six, almost done. We can pull a two out of two and four. So that means that two, let's pull the two out. So two goes in the two once, plus or minus. Two goes in the four twice. We we'll just kind of rewrite the square root of five and the i there. And then we got a six. So this is a fraction. This part is a fraction, two over six, right? So we can reduce that fraction by dividing by two top and bottom. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. So we got one plus or minus two square root of five i. Now this one is invisible, right? So I'm not gonna write it. And then six divided by two is three. So x equals this guy. <clears throat> All right, so now uh, we're going to solve this equation using two different methods. So now we talked about how to use a quadratic formula, but you can also use factoring or some other methods. So we're going to quickly just do a quick rundown of factoring. Um, so basically what we did in lesson 2-3 and then look at what we're doing now in 2-6. So let's use factoring. And we want to compare both of those methods. So uh, what we do, first remember that you want to make one side equal to zero. So let's rewrite the equation. And we're going to subtract 20 on both sides to make one side zero. All right, so we're going to rewrite all these next to each other. And now that's in standard form, right? So we got 6x squared minus, minus 7x minus 20. Standard form. <clears throat> Okay, so now this is actually an AC method problem because A is not equal to one. So this is using the AC method. So use AC method. All right, so let's quickly review the AC method. So the AC method, you need to multiply A and C together. All right, so we got AC equals, so A is six, C is negative 20. So you're gonna get negative 120. And then you set up your table, remember your X table? Negative 120 goes on top. And the negative seven, <clears throat> okay, so, and then the negative seven, uh, let's see, yeah. So this negative seven goes on the bottom. So we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 120 that add up to negative seven. All right, so what are those two numbers? Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can find those two numbers. So we got negative, so let's see. Uh, six, we can do six times 20 is 120. Um, but then if you subtract those, you're going to get 14 and not 7, right? So that's not going to work. 
All right, so let's try five times. Uh, so five times 24 is actually gonna give you 120. Uh, 24 minus five is um, eight is 19, so that's not gonna work. And if you add those, you get 29. Uh, six and 12 is gonna give you, oops, six and 20 is gonna give you 120, we just did that. <clears throat> What about eight? So eight goes into 120, uh, let's see here, it goes into 120 15 times. That seems to work. And then if we made in the 15 negative, well, negative 15 plus eight is negative seven. So that checks out, right? Because we want negative seven. So this will work out. So let's do negative 15 and eight. So those are my two numbers. Okay, so then the next step we do is we split this into those two numbers that we just found, the negative 15 and the 8. I'm going to put those in red. So we get, so we're going to bring down the 6x squared first. So we got 6x squared, and then bring down the negative 15x and the positive 8x. and then bring down the negative 20 equals 0. Okay, and then you're going to factor by grouping, so you're going to put these in their own parentheses, and then what can we pull out of this, this first parentheses? Well, we can only pull out a 3 and an x, because 3 goes into 6 and 3 goes into 15. So we got 3x, and then 3 goes into 6 twice, um, and then we got x goes into x squared, one more left. And then 3 goes into negative 15, five, negative 5 times. That takes care of that first parentheses. Now what goes into the second parentheses? Well, we know we can pull out a 4, because 4 goes into 8, and then 4 goes into 20. So let's pull out a positive 4. So 4 goes into 8 twice with an x left over. And then 4 goes into 20 five times. All right, these match, so you're gonna place one of them in a parentheses. So we got ourselves two x minus five, and then the three x plus four go in another pair of parentheses. So we got three x plus four. All right, we factored it, we can solve it. Now we're gonna use the zero product property. So we're gonna set this equal to zero, and then we're gonna set this equal to zero, and then solve. So to, set, to solve this guy, we're gonna add five to both sides, and then divide by two on both sides. So x is equal to five over two. One of our solutions is done. Now the next one, we subtract four on both sides, and then divide by three. So x is negative 4 over 3. So we got our two solutions. Now how do we do this with the quadratic formula? We should get the same answer. Um, so let's do it with the quadratic formula. So now we know. We already written, wrote it in this form, right? 6x squared minus 7x minus 20. So we know what a, b, and c are. So a is 6, b is negative 7, c is negative 20. So we can plug straight into the formula, get our answer. So we got x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4a times c all over 2 times a, which is 6. We have two negatives is a positive. Seven times seven, or seven squared is seven times seven, which is 49. And then four times six is 24. That's a negative 24. So this is gonna be negative 24. Now negative 24 times negative 20 is positive 
uh, 480. All over 2 times 6 is 12. So we got 7 plus or minus square root. So we got 49 plus 480 is 529 over 12. Now 529 is actually, um, believe it or not, I believe it is actually a perfect square. So if we were to do this, you can actually do this out. Square root of 529 is 23. So this actually is a perfect square. So we got 7 plus or minus 23 over 12. So we got two answers here, don't we? We got x equals 7 plus 23 over 12. And we have x equals 7 minus 23 over 12. So 7 plus 23 is 30. And then 7 minus 23 is negative 16. All we got to do is reduce those two fractions. So let's see, uh, 6 goes into 30 and 6 goes into 12. So we have 30 divided by 6 is 5, 12 divided by 6 is 2. And that was actually one of our solutions in the other problem. If you look at it, we got 5 over 2. All right, so far so good. We need the let's see. Um, four goes into sixteen, and four goes into twelve. So we got x equals negative sixteen divided by four is negative four. And twelve divided by four is three. So negative four over three. Is that the other answer? It sure was. There you go. So which one was easier? Was it was factoring easiest, or was quadratic formula easiest? Sometimes one, one uh, method is easier than the other. I happen to think that sometimes quadratic formula, most of the time quadratic formula is easiest, uh, but sometimes if it's factorable, it's easier to just factor. So it just depends on which method you prefer. All right, go ahead and try the following pro problem and um, we'll go over it in just a second. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and use a quadratic formula. Actually, we're not going to use factoring or anything like that. I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. I'm just going to get the solution to this um, because it takes a lot of time to be able to factor it and all that stuff. So we're just going to use the quadratic formula. And whichever way you use, you should get the same answer. So you can use that to check your work. Okay, so in order to use the quadratic formula, remember that you have to have one side zero. So uh, you need one side to equal zero. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to make, make one side zero. So what I propose is to move the 15 over and move the x over by adding it, doing the opposite operation. So if I subtract 15, that'll be zero. If I add x, that'll be zero. And then whatever I do to one side, I gotta do to the other, right? So I gotta do f plus x, and then I gotta do minus 15. So those go away, so that becomes zero. Um, now, I like to write the x squared first, and then the x, and then the constant. So I'm gonna write the six x squared first, and then the positive x second, and then the minus 15 last. And that way it's in standard form, right? So this right now is in uh, standard form, which is what we want. So now we know A is 6, B is an invisible 1 there, that's B, and then C is negative 15. So plugging it into the quadratic formula, we got negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. So we got negative 1 plus or minus square root of 1. We got a double negative here, which we know it's going to be a positive. Now 4 times 6 is 24. 24 times 15. Um, so we got to do 24 times 15. So it looks like it's 360. So we got 360 over here. 
And let's double check that math real quick. Yep, okay. So we got 361 all over 12. Okay. So we got a negative one plus or minus square root of 361 over 12. Now, let's see if I don't believe this. I don't believe that this is a perfect square. Actually, it is a perfect square. Okay, so 361 is 19 times 19. So this actually is a perfect square. So we get negative one plus or minus 19 over 12. So we got two solutions, negative one plus 19 over 12 and negative one minus 19 over 12. So negative one plus 19 is 18. And then negative one minus 19 is negative 20. So then we can reduce this guy by dividing by six, top and bottom. We can reduce this one by dividing by four, top and bottom, to get our final answers. So 18 divided by six is three, 12 divided by six is two. Negative 20 divided by four is negative five, 12 divided by four is three. All right, that is it for the lesson, guys. I uh, hope you uh, took something out of this lesson, and I will see you in the next video.